Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome to this video. This is John from Programming Knowledge and in this video guys, we're gonna learn how to use unions um, inside our C program. So from the previous tutorial, we learned how to define and use structure and then we also implemented um, different methods or different functions that we could use whenever we are working with structure. Right? So at this point in time, we will be learning how to use union also. So basically, union and structure is almost the same, but there's a significant difference that we will discuss later on. So the thing about struct is, or the thing about structure is that we can store different data types in different memory location. But when we say union, we can store different data types in the same memory location so that being said um, if we try to define union a union is a special data type available in C that will allow us to store different data types in this um, in the same memory location so you can define a union with many members but only one member can contain a value at any given time that's because uh, we store the data inside the same memory location so in other words all the members of the union share the same memory location that's why every time we set a value to a particular member of the union other values will be over um, will be erased and then replaced with the new value of a particular member so to define a union, you must use the union statement. So, from the previous tutorial, we use struct for this structure. But in the case of defining a union, we will define a union by using the union statement in the same way as you did while um, defining the structure. And the union statement defines a new data type with more than one member for your program. So, Basically, it looks like this, but um, instead of a struct, you're going to use union. Okay, so that's union. And then, of course, the name of your uh, union, for example, data, right there. And then you have to add open and close curly braces. That signifies that all the variable inside this curly braces is uh, a member of the union data okay and then of course we can define the members here so the same thing with our structure so that being said we can say here int i okay and then we could also um, add float f and then say for example char str and basically for example the length for this is like 10 okay so let me show you first how this particular union works so the union tag is optional actually and each member definition is a normal variable definition so such as i or int i or float um, F or any other valid variable definition and at the end of the unions definition before the final semicolon you can specify one or more union variables uh, but is but it is optional so you can also say here the name of your union is like um, data okay so you can refer to this data and then you can now act, you now have the access to the members of your union by using this reference. Okay. Now a variable of data uh, type can store um, integer, float, or string of characters. So it means a single variable, and then same memory location can be used to store multiple types of data so you can use any built-in or user-defined data types inside a union based on your requirement so it depends on you 
So the memory occupied by a uh, union will be large enough to hold the largest member of the union. So for example, in this particular code, data type will occupy 20 by or I mean 10 bytes of memory space because this is the maximum space which can be occupied by a character string. Now we can display the values uh, of this union. So for example, we try to display all the, uh, I mean, any value coming from this union. So at first we could, you know, refer to the members by using this reference. So data dot, and then we could say here, I, then we could initialize this value into, for example, um, five like that. And then we could print the value of i. So here we could say the value of i is, and then of course we need to have the format specifier for our i. Okay, so d, and then we could add also the new line, and then comma, and then of course data dot i okay and then semicolon so let's try to run our program so basically let's hope that uh, we won't have problems so build and run our program and as you can see here the value of i is 5 so we were able to set the value of our data i member and uh, initialize it to 5. Now, take a look at this. For example, we set the value of float into a something, um, into some value. For example, data that f equals to, for example, let's say 22 or maybe like 8. Okay. And then, um, we could try to maybe add 8.5 here just to uh, make sure that it is kind of like float value. So we set the value of our F into 8.5. So we could, you know, build and run our application. And as you can see here, we're getting the value of i is something like this. Okay? So the value of i is something like this. That's because the value has been, you know, corrupted when we try to set the member f into something like 8.5. And as you can probably remember that the members of the union share the same memory location. So that's why if we try to change the value of a certain member, then it will override the value of the other member. So that's why it's uh, somehow corrupted our value of i here and we're getting this random number like this. But the purpose of using union actually is to have a some sort of a value at a certain point of time. So for example, if we want to make use of the union, we could try to display the value of i right here after the initialization. So the value of i is, and then we're getting the, the value of i member here. And then also if we want to, you know, display the value of the float f uh, value, or member from this union then we could what we could do here is change this into F that's the formal specifier for a float value and then we could say here the we want to display the member F from the data union so we could actually get the correct value right after this so let's try to run this so build and run our application and as you can see here 
the, that uh, we're getting the value of our i is 5. So let's change this. Instead of i, this is member f. And this is member i because this is a member of this union. So let's build and run our application. And we're getting this output. The value of member i is equal to 5. And then the value of member f is equal to 8.5. So that's basically the correct value that we're getting or we're setting here in our main function. Okay, so I think that's all there is to it for this tutorial. And a sort, as a sort of summary or review, we have learned how to use union inside our C program. And then uh, we learned that we can store different data types in the same memory location by using this union keyword. And then um, store different variables with different data types. And um, yeah, we also set and initialize the value of the members of our union and then also display the values individually right here in our C program. So again, that's all there is to it guys. And if you have questions, please let us know in the comment section below. And thank you again for watching and see you in the next video.